for those of you that who are familiar with uh, dividing heads or index heads, they come with plates like this. And this is three out of the four plates. One is still mounted on the index head itself. And they have uh, concentric circles with uh, different numbers of circles. And you'd think with all of these possibilities here, I would find one with 100 uh, t uh, holes, but uh, not teeth, but holes. But the outer uh, circle here on this plate is 80. So I'm still not where I want to be. So that's why I had to come up with the saw blade. And then you're probably saying, well, how in the heck uh, did you fasten the saw blade? Well, all I did was make up a little arbor here. And it's just a 3 8 threaded rod with uh, an adapter here. And I believe it's a 5 8 step that goes right into the saw blade and then a, a washer and it's threaded here. I know this looks pretty wicked, but I'm going to talk about safety in a second here. And this goes all the way through the spindle. And on uh, this end, the chuck end, I have another little adapter that I made with a 3 8 hole in it and a nut. And I had to make this real thin right here so that it did not interfere with the jaws of the chuck. So that was one little problem that I had. So I'm going to remount this and I'm going to get it very tight so there is no possibility of this slipping a little bit and ruining the piece uh, from the true 100 uh, marks that I want. So I'm going to reinstall it right now off camera. After I figure out a way to hold the saw blade into the spindle here, I still wasn't done. I had to have some way of indexing it. So I came up with this little device here, which is kind of like a pawl, but not exactly, but the principle is the same. But there needed to be a way to mount it. Well, how are you going to mount it? Well, there were already two holes drilled in here, and I think they were drilled by a, by a previous owner. And I can feel the ends of the screw. There's one here and one right here. So I just transfer those holes onto a piece of inch and a half uh, angle iron here that's about a foot long, just to make a platform to hold this little device, a and a rather firm platform. And when I take this off, uh, there'll be no worse for the wear because I didn't even drill any holes into the machine, but you may find that necessary. I doubt if anyone in the entire world is going to do this, but I'm showing you how I did it. And uh, it might be fun for you to watch and just to entertain you. But this, again, this isn't something that anybody's actually going to do besides Jubal Kane. Again, let me talk about safety. The machine will be unplugged when I use this. Matter of fact, I'll, I'll have the plug draped over the machine here so you can see it. But absolutely, we do not want this under power because this is unguarded and, and would be very dangerous if it was rotating. But it's not going to be rotating or it's going to be rotating one one hundredth of a turn at a time, which is actually quite safe. But you got to be careful you don't run your arm across this or cut yourself on this or, have, or catch a rag or anything on it or tear your clothing. But uh, look what I've done here. I milled out a little piece here and I've got it screwed into place and this is a 3 8 square stock, a piece about an inch and a half long and I uh, milled a slot in there and this is a 1 16th inch roll pin and I needed a small pin that would fit down into the throat of this, uh, uh, this saw blade. I tried a, a 3 seconds and it was still too big in diameter but now watch that will fall right down and as I rotate this I go a little bit past, and each time it's going one one hundredth of a turn. And on the, the actual finished product that I did before, I don't even have to watch this. I can hear it, as bad as my hearing is, I can hear it click into the next tooth. So I go like that, and then I back it up, and I'm holding the chuck with my hand and exerting just a little pressure down this way. And then I would make my scribe. Then I would go into the next one, holding a little pressure so it, the pin stays into the, uh, the throat of the, uh, the, of the tooth. Make my next scribe. 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 And this is a bit tedious because you have to do that 100 times. And now I'm back home at my original starting line. 
and that's how Tubal Cain is uh, indexing or locating the work and it doesn't matter what the diameter of the dial is that's going to divide whatever the diameter is by one one hundredth as you move around now if for some reason you were working on some other project and you needed to to uh, uh, index it you could get a different uh, saw blade here it is from another angle for those of you that are interested in such devices I'm always interested in, in uh, intricate little devices but this is really quite simple it probably took me 30 minutes to make and whenever you're making a one of like this and again I don't draw things up I should draw them up but I just start making them but now watch how that works Pretty nifty, huh? As a little sidebar here, I'm over at the Craftsman uh, Atlas 12-inch lathe, and uh, they took the trouble many years ago to make this uh, gear here uh, as an indexing device. And uh, some of you know you have that in your atlases, and others uh, maybe didn't know it was there, or maybe not all models have it. But look at the holes here. And I'm not going to count them now, but it seems to me there are 60 holes. I've counted them in the past, but Tubal King's not in the mood for doing anything that tedious at the moment. But there, let's just say for the sake of conversation here that there are 60 holes. So you could uh, use that as a dividing uh, method for uh, other projects, not for w what we're doing here, because it's not going to work. But uh, over here, there's a little plunger that is the pin that will go into those holes. I'll see if I can get the camera position a little better to show that. But you can push that into one of the holes and uh, do your operation, whatever it is, back it out and perhaps you're going to move five holes for what you're going to do next. Or maybe you're going to go all the way uh, halfway around, which would be 30 holes dividing it just by two. So this is pretty neat on the Atlas Lays. I don't know why uh, no one else has ever done that. I don't know. And I think the reason is that everything on these lathes were, was uh, die cast and it was e once you made the master mold it was cheap enough to reproduce. By the way I did unplug this lathe since I have my hand in the gears here. But uh, look at this little pin here now. That can be I'm engaged in one of the holes now, but it's knurled on the end. I can pull it out and rotate the uh, spindle here as many spaces as I want. And put it into the next hole. I'm having trouble finding it here with that cam there it is, with the camera in my hand. So I'm in the next hole. A little sticky. Not going to come out now, but I just wanted to point this out for other uh, indexing operations that some of you Atlas owners may do in the future. Just to clarify things here, when I was talking about the plates from the dividing head, I was talking about mounting one of them on here if I had the right number of, of holes, which I do not and that's why I'm using the saw blade but uh, these plates in conjunction with the dividing head can divide a circle into any imaginable number of parts including 100 so if you want to do that on the uh, milling machine using the index head and inscribing it with a scribing tool hold being held in the collet that is something that uh, can be done too but that's not the purpose of this video where I intend to do it on the Logan lathe. Also, in an upcoming video at some time, I will be making a belt guard for this uh, large pulley back here. So watch for that. Now the rough machined dial is now mounted on that 3 8 uh, harbor here with the set screw. And I'm taking a cleaning up cut here. 
because it was a little bit uh, uh, eccentric. And I want to just bring it down to, uh, to where it runs true. And this won't reduce the diameter very much. Take several light passes. By the way, I did remove that wicked looking saw blade uh, for the purposes of this cut. I'm just about ready to scribe the graduations, but before I do, let's take a look at uh, the finished one that I did uh, last week. To complicate things even more, the graduations are three different lengths. So every 10 is uh, quite long, and then in between they're very short, and then uh, every 5 they're about a medium length. And I went so far as to measure them, and what we have here is, for the length of uh, the graduations, the short ones are 90 thousandths long, the medium ones are 150 thousandths, and the the longest ones are 250, which is a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to go ahead uh, and uh, set the stop for three different lengths. The carriage stop, that is. I have the luxury here on the Logan lathe of having a carriage stop that has uh, three different uh, length stops on it. So I have already set the permanent one down here, such that when I... Uh, strike against that, that will give me the quarter inch long or the 250 thousandths long uh, scribe mark. Then when I back this out, if I drop uh, this one, that will give me the medium length ones, which were 150 thousandths. And finally, I drop the other one, and that gives me uh, 90 thousandths. In reality, more than likely most of you, if anyone actually does this, are, is going to have a stop more uh, similar to this or a micrometer type where you really only have one length. And if that's what you have, uh, you can use that for your uh, long one and then uh, spacers for the other ones that you uh, determine what, what thickness of spacer you have. The other possibility is to go ahead and, and scribe all 100 of them short. Come back and do every tenth one, the medium, and uh, the other uh, 10 long. But you will be re-scribing. Re but uh, that might be a, a good way of doing it too. So there's several ways to approach this, but I am using the method here with this type of carriage stop. Next I have to make an adjustment on the lathe such that uh, the cross slide will feed in uh, the correct depth for the graduations or the scribe marks and that's going to be I have determined five thousandths deep. I think earlier I said I was going to make them ten thousandths but I've amended that and I'm going to make it uh, five thousandths but to get that depth I'm going to take a feeler gauge and this is two thousandths and bring the uh, tool up until it just drags a little bit on this right there. Now I've determined that I'm two thousandths away and I can back the scriber away, move in two thousandths and then five thousandths or in other words a total of seven thousandths then I won't touch that. That will be that uh, adjustment for the entire 100 graduations or scribe marks. Looking at the finished product here, I would like a medium line to be in line with the set screw hole here because uh, I don't want to try to stamp a number near that hole. That's so I'm, in other words, I'm straddling it. So I'm going to start out with a medium uh, scribe mark, which is right there, and I've marked it medium. I marked the other one short. And I'm in a notch on my gear here. Now I'm not going to be able to show you all the different things I'm doing here. 
And when I do this, or when you do this, you need to concentrate. You need to turn the telephone off and the radio off and just think about long three or four, or rather, uh, short ones and then a medium one and then uh, four short ones and a long one and so on right on down the line till you go all the way around so there's the medium I already did that and I'm set on short now so there's one click two Click, three, click, four, click, and now a long one. Now back to short, click, one, two, three, four, click, and a medium. And I am now 10% done. As I rotate the work, listen to it click now in the next position, but I am then lightly turning the chuck uh, counterclockwise with my hand, just holding it that way so that the, uh, the pawl over here stays in the throat of the tooth. And at the same time here, I was manipulating my uh, carriage stop between uh, short, medium, and long. And I can't uh, show that all in, uh, in one view.